If you haven't seen the video on why I have all of this stuff, including the motherboard and the figure, as well as obviously the Ryzen 5 1600X, then do check out the video that I did where I went to AMD's offices, thanks to MSI, and uh, sort of asked a few questions about overclocking, about the RX 500 series, and a few other things, so I do recommend that. But otherwise, let's take a look at this Ryzen 5 1600X. This is a really impressive chip. It boasts six cores and 12 threads using simultaneous multi-threading, or SMT. It's still a 95 watt TDP, but because it has its cores disabled in a 3 plus 3 fashion, so three cores per CCX unit, you're looking at the full cache amount of 60 megabytes of L3 and I think three megabytes of L2. Otherwise, this is a really impressive, still 95 watt TDP chip with 24 PCIe lanes total, so still the full amount. And this runs at 3.6 gigahertz as the base clock uh, with the single core boost going to four gigahertz with I think XFR, which should take it to 4.1. But in my testing, and I'll talk a little bit more about this later, it was perfectly stable on all cores at four gigahertz. So that's really quite impressive. As with all of the other Ryzen chips, this one has the Ryzen logo uh, laser engraved onto it with also the 1600X badge up at the top as well. So a very stylish looking chip if you actually look at it before you put it in your motherboard. Of course, this is still PGA as well, or pin grid array, so the pins are on the chip, not on the socket. And you will need either an X370, a B350, or an A320 motherboard to use one of these chips with the AM4 socket on it. If you haven't seen my videos, especially the reviews on the 1800X and the 1700, I highly recommend you take a look at those first so that you can understand a bit more about the architecture, what's new about these chips, which is pretty much everything, and how those perform to how this will compare to that. But for this video, let's just take a look at the performance. Starting with Cinebench, you can see that in the single threaded side, you're looking at basically the same performance as an 1800X, still better than the 1600K, but not quite as good as the 7700K. And in the multi-threaded, you can see you're definitely missing a couple of cores there, as it's still better than the four core 7700K, but not quite hitting that eight core 6900K. And Asus Realbench are still wiping the floor with Intel on this one. I think that's mostly due to the encoding results, but feel free to take a look at the website for the full results, including minimum and maximums for GTA and Dirt Rally. In 3D Mark, the total score is actually now a little bit higher, about 50 points higher than the 7700K, while the physics score remains pretty high, though still not as good as the 6900K. In GTA 5, we're seeing a couple of FPS clawed back towards being closer matched to the 7700K, although still not quite there. Of course, this is 1080p, uh, and again, feel free to take a look at the website for 1440p and 4K results for this one as well, as it's a lot closer on that front. In Dirt Rally, we're actually seeing almost identical performance here, which is really nice to see. And thanks to driver updates and stuff like that and game patches, we're seeing, especially with the OC results, actually a little bit higher than the 7700K. So again, a really impressive result, and I'm looking forward to future patches and updates as well to bring performance closer. Now, I want to make it clear that the other results on the graph here are from my previous testing. I haven't had a chance to retest all of these uh, you know, CPUs at this point. I will be doing a future comparison between between uh, basically retesting everything in a couple months time to see how stuff like turning the HBET timer, the new Ryzen power plan, uh, and all of the other additional tweaks and updates have benefited stuff like the 1800X versus a 7700K in, over the last sort of couple months since they've been out. But for the time being, you can see that this is still a really, really impressive chip. And especially since this is lined up right against the 7600K, especially considering you're getting those extra cores and all of those extra threads as as well this really does start to pull away even in terms of gaming performance and of course in terms of your more multimedia and you know workload performance especially if you do stuff like video editing 3d uh, 3d modeling game development or anything else that is intensive that doesn't necessarily require a, a game to run the other thing that you might have noticed is that i did overclock the cpu to 4 gigahertz now the ram speed that i was running this with was using the axmp setting on the msi b350 tomahawk board this did seem to work fairly well and I think I managed to get the RAM to run at 2667 megahertz. I did try for the full 3000 megahertz or 2933 that the RAM that I have is perfectly capable of but that just wasn't stable with an overclock or even not with an overclock so unfortunately I can't give you results for that but it isn't running with uh, 2133 so just bear that in mind. Now when it comes to temperatures with the non-overclock settings using a Cooler Master Master Liquid 240 with the sort of stock uh, mounting brackets that uh, sort of 
clip over the side. I'm not a massive fan of that, but in terms of the non-overclock temperatures, we're seeing about 60 degrees, and the overclock temperatures were running around about 80 to 90 degrees, so fairly hot on that front, but that was a four gigahertz overclock as well on all six cores, so do bear that in mind. For me, this is really fantastic chip. It comes at a really brilliant price point, around about, I think, £240, $240 at the time of filming, so that really does compete very well with the 7600K, and considering you're getting, uh, well, in this case, three times more threads with, obviously, an extra two cores on top of that as well. It's a really, a very impressive chip, fantastic for multimedia workloads if you're doing video editing or game development or 3D modeling or anything that is really quite intensive and needs a lot of CPU power, and it's still really good for gaming as well. And if you pick up something like the MSI B350 Tomahawk board, which is, I think, about £100 or $100 at the time of filming, that's a really overall impressive package. Pick up some RAM for that. You can spend a little bit more on your GPU than you maybe would if you're going for an Intel system and potentially even get way more power. So. Yeah, really impressive. So in terms of scoring, I have to go with a 5 for 5 for money here. I think in terms of performance, this really is very impressive and it's certainly getting better as the days go on, so it's going to be a 5 for me here. When it comes to functionality, I think this is also going to be maybe a 4.5 as the RAM compatibility just isn't quite there yet, although I don't know if that's to do with the chip or the motherboard, so do bear that one in mind. In terms of styling, it's a CPU, especially with that Ryzen logo emblazed in it, so it's going to be a 5. And Tech BB score has to be a 5 with, I think, Probably even a top tier award. This is a really, really impressive CPU, comes at a fantastic value for money, and is uh, just really overall brilliant. So I do highly recommend it. If you want to check out the price when and where you watch this, take a look at the links in the description down below. I'd also really appreciate it if you're buying anything else from Amazon or Overclockers UK, if you could use those affiliate links in the description down below as well. It really does benefit me, it helps me out massively, and keeps me making these videos as my full-time job. So I'd really appreciate that. I'd also appreciate it if you take a look at the uh, merchandise link in the description down below. That also helps me out quite a lot. There's some tech and debut related stuff and some just generally fun tech stuff. So feel free to take a look at those as well. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful and informative, I'd be really uh, glad if you could share it uh, both on you know, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, or tech forums, or really anywhere else that you can. It'd be really appreciated. Also feel free to subscribe and uh, hit the like button if you liked it. Feel free to hit the dislike button if you didn't like it, but do let me know in the comments down below so that I can improve for next time. If you any questions feel free to let me know in the comments down below as well like some other videos over here for you and the subscribe button over this side and otherwise uh, yeah thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you all in the next one